So you are all welcome to today's um, oraposium. I'm glad to be here and to have you listen up. And um, thank you, Miss Charity. I hope my screen can be seen. Yes, 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 it can be seen. Okay. So I'm presenting today on um, teaching and evaluation methods in allied dental education. And um, here is my presentation um, outline. In my introduction, we will have an overview of what teaching methods and evaluation are, what it is in allied dental education, its importance, and um, the various forms of teaching methods in the classroom, the lab, clinic, and the ones for field trip, conclusion and references. So before I go talk about in allied dental education, I want to say that teaching uh, methods are the various instructional um, strategies and techniques employed to impact knowledge and skills in the learner. So with teaching methods, you as a lecturer or instructor will be able to facilitate that to convey the contents of your, your course material in order to facilitate or improve learning. So while the evaluation aspect assesses the learner to make accurate judgment about the aspect of learning that has taken place. So teaching um, and evaluation methods in allied dental education, um, these are the various ways and means, various approaches of impacting and assessing education knowledge and skills in allied dental um, um, education. So, and the importance of um, teaching and evaluation methods in allied dental education is for the lecturer to be able to convey the course content effectively in order to help the student to master, learn and apply the content of the various courses um, taught in specific um, context, okay? And as this has taken place, through assessment, the lecturer is able to evaluate to ascertain the amount of learning that has been achieved. So, um, in evaluation, the teacher or instructor makes judgments about the extent of learning of the student. He evaluates um, the knowledge, comprehension, and skills that has been acquired by the student. So, looking at the slide now, I want to give an um, overview of um, um, teaching methods, okay? So all teaching method theories are all based on two parameters, okay? And that is to say that um, generally any teaching method engaged or employed by a lecturer has two major elements that are evident. And that is the approach, as you can see on the slide, and the technology. The approach and the technology. And um, the approach is talking about the style of delivery or the style of presentation of the course content in the teaching and learning environment. Okay? And that this style of uh, delivery can be teacher-centered or student-centered. And um, when the style of delivery is um, um, teacher-centered, here the lecturer is in charge, okay? He is the authority and superior figure. He's the custodian of knowledge and delivers this knowledge to the student, okay, as a professional, as a pro. And in this kind of approach, he gives, he directs all the activities and gives direct instruction. So there is less activity on the part of the student. In this kind of approach, the students are the passive um, learners. 
So, but in the student-centered approach, here, there are more activity on the part of the students. They assume a much more active role in the learning process, though the lecturer or the teacher still serves as an authority figure, but um, carries out the functions or uh, the function of being more a facilitator or a guide on the side of the um, student. So in this approach, students um, learn from engaging in activities, in the various activities um, assigned to them, and they are continually assessed on such um, activities as uh, maybe how they participated in class, in group projects, or in, in any other responsibility that has been assigned to them. Then for the technology, it, technology has to do with the um, tools used in conjunction with the approach to ensure that um, knowledge is effectively conveyed or communicated to the students. And this technology we are talking about can be high or low technology, can be a high technology use or low technology use, okay? So in the high technology use, and it has to do with the lecturers um, utilizing various technology to aid students in their classroom learning. That is utilizing various technology that will help convey whatever um, content their cost um, material, the content of their cost and um, cost material to the students. So they use devices like the laptop, the desktop, and um, presentation software using internet to connect students with others and with information, so putting up uh, maybe classes online and so forth. Then for the low tech uh, method, here we talk about um, the traditional way things, um, lectures are being um, delivered um, and in that process, the lecturer may decide to write on the board to give notes, handouts, and all that. So that is that about um, teaching methods. So whatever teaching method you want to employ as an instructor, there's the approach, the style of delivery, and there's a technology attached to it. It could be teacher-centered, student-centered, or high-tech use or low-tech use. So in the next slide, we'll be looking at evaluation because we are talking about teaching methods and then evaluation. So we are, we are talking about evaluation um, generally. So before evaluation can take place, you have to carry out assessment. Okay, as a lecturer, you want to test um, probably the six levels of um, understanding. You want to test understanding and learning of the student. So in doing that, you have to test the knowledge, how much um, the student knows. You have to test comprehension, how much the student understands the content of the course. You have to you know, assess how the student can apply or relate whatever he has been taught to a concrete um, life situation. You want to find out how students can analyze or synthesize what they've been taught how much these students can evaluate issues relating to what they have been taught or how they can carry out certain activities or perform certain um, um, skills, okay? So as a lecturer, you want to make value judgment about the amount of knowledge and skill that has been acquired. So looking at the slide, you see um, effective evaluation, okay? So for a lecturer to carry out an effective evaluation or for the lecturer to achieve effective evaluation, the lecturer must carry out observation, must observe, monitor the student, supervise them, and give or ask for feedback, okay? And this feedback we are talking about can be generated when the lecturer asks questions either during the course of the teaching or after, okay? And again, it's um, when the lecturer gives a kind of quiz or test. 
The next one is um, the lecturer can get generate these feedbacks by giving assignments which could take any form, written form or ask the um, students to present in the class. Then the next thing is that um, um, the lecturer can give a prepared test, okay, such as quizzes or examination. Okay, I missed something here. This is quick test. That is that kind of test you give immediately after you teach. Then the last one is prepared test, such as, um, you, know, you know, informing the students that there will be a test so and so they and them um, giving examination. So when these feedbacks and responses from the students are assessed, marked and graded, the lecturer will now be able to make judgments or evaluate the amount of uh, learning. That is the effective um, evaluation. And all these um, um, activities should be continuous, whether the lecturer is observing, monitoring, supervising, or um, asking for feedback or giving feedback. It should be a continuous um, process, okay? Yes. Then the next one is that evaluation is made against a set standard. That is that. And you can also employ technology, okay, in assessing your students. You can convert um, Google Forms or Microsoft Form to quiz. When you open the form, you set the questions and ask your student to go online and answer them or you engage some software that can help you do so. Okay, when you do that, you are a kind of um, employing technology in evaluation. So the next one, we are going to look at the forms of teaching method used in engaging allied um, dental students, okay? So there are so many um, teaching methods, I mean very many of them. So as I was reviewing some articles I came across in the internet, I encountered a list of teaching methods where the author used almost all the alphabet as acronyms for the various teaching methods. So except for something like six of them, excuse me, and all the letters of the alphabet used had about two to eight or more types, you know, attached to each of them. And I came across a work titled 150 Teaching Methods, another one 152, okay? Just for you to understand how numerous these teaching methods are. Remember that all teaching of allied dental students takes place either in the classroom, in the clinic, the lab, or during um, field trips, okay? So, consequent upon this um, fact, I chose to discuss these forms under the title um, "Forms of Teaching Methods Used in Allied Dental," uh, using engaging allied dental students. Okay, so so that we we'll consider these various forms, we we'll consider the various forms that can be used in the classroom, consider the ones suitable for clinic, and um, the ones um, used in the lab and for field trip, okay? I believe that going about it this way will be, um, it will enable us to deal with the relevant ones related to allied dental education and for us not to spend too much time talking about them, um, all of them. And one important thing to note is that most of the teaching methods that will be mentioned in each of these locations overlaps themselves. They are interconnected or interdependent on one another. And the again is that high technology or low technology can be incorporated or employed in any of these teaching methods that uh, will be engaged in these um, um, locations. Okay. So let's talk about um, teaching and evaluation methods for classroom. Okay. The ones we have the lecture method. The lecture method is the oldest form of teaching and we are all conversant with this method. It is more teacher-centered and um, also centered on presentation of content. It is centered on presentation of content, clarifications, 
explanation of principle, facts, and um, relationship, okay? This method of um, teaching does not consider the learner's interest, okay? It does not consider the personality of the learner or the ability of the student, though it develops concentration in students and um, it is an economical teaching method because a lot can be achieved. A lot can be dished out using this uh, method. Then we have the discussion method. This discussion method is student or learner centered, okay? It allows for um, interaction among the students and the lecturer is still the facilitator here, okay? He's the one that will structure the discussion part. He's the one that will ensure that all um, the participants or everybody in the class are um, participating in the discussion. Though the method can be time consuming, but it is um, rewarding, okay? But this method is better if the lecturer can, you know, give the lecture materials or video or whatever to the student to go through first before they come into the class to discuss. So it could be class discussion or it could be a panelist type of a discussion, okay? Where the lecturer may decide to bring in fellow lecturers as panelists or some of the students who sit and discuss the topic and before the rest of the class. Then we have another method that can be used um, in the classroom, the brainstorming, okay? Brainstorming takes place when two people meet to generate ideas um, around a specific, around a specific um, interest, okay? So the lecturer initiates a topic or asks question or pose a, um, a problem. And students are allowed to spontaneously, you know, make contribution regarding the issue that has been raised. The students are allowed to give their personal opinion um, um, and any form of idea, okay? And these ideas the students are generating may not be wrong. And they, um, they may not be right, okay? So this form of a method, this brainstorming method is student-centered. And um, the teacher or lecturer may add a high or low tech technology, okay? It is low tech when he asks the student to write their ideas down and high tech when they are asked to record their ideas in devices and send. So the next method that can be used is the seminar method. Okay, it's a teaching method. It involves the lecturers and the members of the class or classes, okay? So seminar is a teaching method. In this kind of method, the lecturer and students come together to exchange views of current problems. You know, they share with others their own experiences, experiments, and discoveries. This seminar method fosters a deeper understanding among students and helps students to develop skills in uh, reading and comprehension, okay? It also um, enables students to gain experience in uh, self-evaluation and evaluation and, and evaluating other students because during seminar uh, presentation, a student can be allowed to appraise the work of another student and looking at other people's work, you'll be able to appraise yourself also, okay? Then the next one is um, symposium. Um, symposium. So two, in symposium, two or more persons under the direction of the, two or more students under the direction of um, the lecturer will have to present separate speeches, okay? Separate presentation that will give um, several aspects of the topic assigned to them while the rest of the class tries to deal with any rising question, issues of doubt are clarified. So all these teaching methods employed in the classroom, you know, can also be with high or low technology. It is low technology, as I said before, if we go about it the traditional way we know how to do, but it is high technology when we bring in um, the internet, you can even create these classes online, you know, 
where people can join using their, device, their, their devices, connecting with other people to, you know, be able to listen to what is going on in the class. Or better still, um, the, um, the lecturer may decide to engage flipped classroom method of teaching using um, some of this method. So for the evaluation method, the evaluation method here is um, to carry out continuous kind of assessment and the examination. That is how to go about the evaluation of um, whatever is being done in the classroom. Then the next one, we are looking at um, teaching and evaluation method for the lab, okay? The first thing we should understand is that um, different laboratories are needed for various purposes in the teaching of allied dental uh, students. So such um, lab as the lab of the dental technologists, this lab is used to train them, train the technicians and the denturists. We have the demonstration lab for the dental nurses and assistants, dental assistants. We have the phantom head simulation lab for training of dental therapy students and other allied dental students. And in such lab, they can learn different um, procedures, okay? Procedures like um, fluoridation, filling, and the rest of them. We have the X-ray lab too, where clinical students are trained on the use of um, X-ray. So the teaching methods that can be used in this um, lab include the demonstration um, method. As I said before, that some of these methods are intertwined. They are connected. They depend on one another. Before you begin to demonstrate anything for the student in the lab, you kind of give a kind of brief um, lecture, okay? Before you even begin to demonstrate. So this demonstration method is just a method of instruction where the lecturer or instructor actually performs an operation or does a job to show the students what to do, how to do it. And as I said um, earlier, through explanation, you'll be able to tell the student why they are to um, perform the operation the way he, he said it or, or do whatever he asked them he was um, doing, where it is to be done and uh, when it is to be done. Okay, so the next one, method that can be used in the lab is the role play okay role play has to do with dramatization of a clearly defined situation where the instructor or lecturer puts the student in a situation that they want to teach the students about you can um, the lecturer may ask the student sit down on the dental chair as a patient and another student is asked to take the vital signs and the instructor there and then teaches them what he has in mind. Then the next one is um, hands-on training. That is the training you get as you are working or actually practicing, okay? Here, in this kind of teaching method, the students are learning by doing, but the instructor is there to guide and put the students through. Then the next one is the project method, okay? Some projects are carried out in the lab, such as um, local production of um, toothpaste or special toothpaste that is geared towards treatment of some oral conditions, and, uh, something like hypersensitivity of the teeth, or um, any kind of um, project, projects such as um, fabrication of artificial parts of the orofacial regions, such projects, in such projects, okay, the lecturer and the student will have to collaborate and the student, uh, student learn a lot. So when assigning this project to group of students, it is important that as a lecturer, you emphasize the need for equitable distribution or equitable contribution to the assignments because you know some students, once it's a group kind of work, some of them will dodge, some will say, okay, let me contribute the money, you who knows it, to go out, carry out the project. It ought not to be so. As a lecturer, you have to ensure that 
during assessment, you address the different efforts of each student. Okay, that is what will help you to effectively assess the student to ensure learning has taken place and that um, you carry out an effective evaluation. So, and um, another thing about um, the evaluation method here is that it is profession specific. It is profession and the procedure specific. Whatever is being done there is because I said, you know, we have many members of the allied dental um, education students, okay? We have the dental therapist, dental technologist, um, dental um, nurses, we have the dental assistant and the rest of them, okay? So that is why I said it is profession and the procedure specific. So observing what is being done, vis-a-vis -vis what has been drawn or what is obtainable in the curriculum and the standard expected by the regulatory bodies. This will help in, a, in the evaluation process, okay? Then the next one is um, the methods. The method used um, in the um, lab and um, the clinic are almost the same, okay? We have the demonstration method also. It can take place in the clinic. And um, where the, um, as I said earlier on, the instructor actually does what he wants the student to do and allow the student to do it. And um, going about it through explanation. The role play, the same thing. It could be dramatized in the clinic. And hands-on training takes place in the clinic too, where the student um, is allowed to, you know, carry out the procedures or whatever skills the person has acquired in the lab to relate it with um, the patient in the clinic, okay? So that is that about the teaching method. Then for the evaluation method, it's still the same thing. It is professional and procedure specific. So for the clinic and lab, observing what is being done, for you to be able to effectively um, carry out evaluation of whatever is going on there, you must observe whatever, as a lecturer, you must observe whatever that is being done. This at this what has been drawn as the standard or what is obtainable in the curriculum or the standard that has been set by the um, regulatory bodies, okay? So that is why it is very important that the professional that has the knowledge and skill is supposed to be the one to carry out this evaluation exercise. Because um, it is only someone who is trained in the same profession that understands the nitty gritty of the profession and the procedure, okay? So that um, such uh, professional will be able to look out for what is expected in each procedure, okay? This is very, very important. So there is no need to bring in a dental technologist to supervise um, the clinical work of a dental therapist or a dental assistant and the rest of them. He may not carry out an effective um, evaluation and the evaluation may be biased, okay? So this is very important. Then the next one is um, um, the teaching methods carried out um, in, um, that can be used for field trips. As we all know, field trip can be, uh, be a compulsory element of courses, okay? There are some courses that when a student takes, it is very important that uh, they go on field trip in order to assimilate the principles assimilate um, the theories and everything concerning that very course, okay? Um, something like uh, those who offer laboratory technique, when they visit the lab, they will be able to appreciate what they have been taught, okay? So this field trip is an educational procedure, you know, where students study, they study firsthand the objectives, the materials in their natural environment, okay? It is the most real, the most solid and best 
visual technique that gives um, students direct experience with reality and then um, real life situations. Okay, so the methods that can be used here um, includes um, demonstration blended with lecturing, hands-on training. Okay, and students can be made to visit. Um, you know, bringing technology into play, you know, you can, the students, you can bring in a um, virtual environment if, um, if you can, have, the school can afford one, okay, so that these students will be able to have field experience. They'll be able to, um, you know, collaborate what they are seeing with what they have learned. They can watch procedures or visit a dental or public health facility virtually. That is want to bring in technology into it. So, and then um, the last thing is that evaluation method. You can ask for oral report, assess the oral report, or written report, or you may give quiz, test, or examination in order to evaluate their experience or in order to assess the experience they had or what they have learned during the field trip. Then um, um, it is very important that we engage these um, methods with high step, okay? So in conclusion, I want to say that um, teaching and evaluation is very important in imparting knowledge and skills in students. So as lecturers in the allied dental education, let us do well to engage relevant teaching and evaluation methods with high and the appropriate technology that will enlarge and widen the horizon of learning of our students and aid in effective teaching and learning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much, Mrs. Enayef Anojo, for that um, presentation.